Today's top stories, a political analyst says more Filipinos are likely to support federalism soon. The U.S. announces the official return of the Balanghiga Bells to the Philippines. The National Telecommunications Commission junks the appeals of telco player Aspirants Sierra Telecom and pt and And the LTFRB is set to conduct hearings on the petition for jeepney and bus fare rollbacks. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. More Filipinos are likely to support the proposed shift to a federal government. This, as a political analyst noted that even skeptics are understanding its benefits as federalism is explained properly. Here is our report. Political analyst Ramon Casiple says majority of Filipinos will eventually support a proposal to a change in form of government. Casiple, who is also Federalism Roadshow Speaker, says even skeptics became believers after the advantages and benefits of federalism had been explained to them. Federalism continues to gain support from local leaders even in areas with strong opposition such as Cebu and Iloilo. He says people opposing federalism are those who don't want to change from a unitary government because they are beneficiaries of the current system. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Rom Dulfo. Malacanang thanked the Senate for passing on third and final reading the Rice Tariffication Bill. Senators unanimously voted to approve the bill which President Rodrigo Duterte certified as urgent. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo is confident the bill will smoothly hurdle the bicameral conference committee. He reiterated that the president expressed the need to improve the availability of rice, reduce prices and stop corruption and domination of rice cartels. The rice tariffication bill replaces quotas on rice importation into tariffs in a bid to bring down the price of rice in the market and tame the high inflation. The bill also creates a rice comprehensive enhancement fund which ensures that all duties collected from imported rice will benefit local farmers. Malacanang assures that President Rodrigo Duterte is in good physical condition. This amid talks over his absence in a few meetings of the 33rd ASEAN-related summits in Singapore. More on this from Rom Dulfo. Malacanang clarifies President Rodrigo Duterte's absence in a few meetings of the 33rd ASEAN-related summits has nothing to do with his physical health. Presidential spokesman Salvador Panelo made a statement to answer speculations of the president's health and well-being. Panelo said the president's work schedule is proof that he is in top physical shape. The president was able to attend the ASEAN-China Summit where he delivered the ASEAN Common Statement as the new country coordinator for the ASEAN-China Dialogue Relations. He also witnessed the signing ceremony for the Memorandum of Understanding between the Eurasian Economic Commission and ASEAN on Economic Cooperation. He also had a bilateral meeting with ASEAN host and Singapore Prime Minister Li Xianlong and joined important gatherings with dialogue partners such as Chinese Premier Li Keqiang, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, and Russian President Vladimir Putin. As for the events that he did not attend, Panelo says President Duterte has designated Foreign Affairs Secretary Tudor Luxin Jr. to represent him. From Singapore, President Duterte will travel to Papua New Guinea to attend the 19th Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Economic Leaders Meeting from November 17 to 18. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Rom Dulfo. The United States has formally turned over the Balangiga Bells back to the Philippines. Defense Secretary James Mattis made the announcement during the Veterans Remembrance Ceremony at the Warren Air Force Base in Wyoming. Mattis says that in returning the bells of Balangiga to the country, the U.S. picks up this generation's responsibility to deepen the respect between the American and Filipino people. Philippine Ambassador to the U.S. Jose Manuel Romualdez says the announcement marks a closure to the part of history that the two nations had in the 1900s. The Malagiga bells were taken by American troops as war booty from a town church in eastern Samar 117 years ago. 
years ago. The bells are expected to be shipped back to the Philippines by end of 2018. The two war artifacts will be refurbished in a facility in Philadelphia and transferred to one of the U.S. bases in South Korea where the third bell is housed before its transit to the Philippines. The military says it has yet to receive any documented human rights violations or complaints related to martial law in the Philippines. AFP spokesperson Edgar Arevalo notes that martial law in Mindanao is being implemented with respect for human rights and in adherence to existing laws. He says the military is inclined to recommend the extension of martial law in Mindanao. Various sectors have expressed intentions to continue the implementation of martial law. Arevalo says the AFP will make its recommendations based on its findings. Martial law in Mindanao was declared on May 23, 2017, following attacks launched by the Malta Group in Marawi City. It was extended until December 31, 2018. The Commission on Higher Education, or CHED, welcomes the Supreme Court's decision on removal of Filipino and Panitikan subject in college. And the PNP complains against the portrayal of police in a telenovela. More on these and other news around the Metro from Miguel Hill. The Commission on Higher Education welcomes the decision of the Supreme Court upholding the exclusion of Filipino, Panitikan, and the Philippine Constitution as college core subjects. Shed ordered the removal of these subjects in the college curriculum as these are found in the basic education curriculum from grades 1 to 10 and senior high school pursuant to the K-12 law. Shed also said it welcomes the opposition of groups in filing motions for reconsideration on the case. In other news, France has provided financial aid amounting to 27 million pesos for a feasibility study on the implementation of the first urban cable car project in the country. Ambassador Nicolas Calais says the French government supports the construction of an urban cable car system as part of efforts in getting efficient mode of transportation in Metro Manila. Transportation Secretary Arthur Togade is pushing for the consideration of La Union Baguio and Caticlan Boracay as prospective routes for the cable car system to promote tourism in those areas. The Philippine National Police laments the bad portrayal of police officers in the ABS-CBN action drama Ang Provinciano. PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde says he plans to address the matter before the MTRCB and the TV producer. He particularly pointed to the portrayal of the PNP chief being in cahoots with the series fictional vice president in illegal activities. For its part, ABS-CBN reminds the public that Ang Provinciano is a work of fiction. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Miguel Hill. Still to come, the National Telecommunications Commission junks the appeals of telco player aspirants Sear Telecom and pt and Ilocos Norte aspires to become the black garlic capital of the Philippines. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues. This 2018, over a thousand delegates and observers from the East Asian region will come together in the Philippines to step up their efforts in pursuit of sustainability. Since 2003, the ES Congress has been contributing towards addressing global issues such as climate change adaptation, biodiversity conservation, pollution reduction and waste management, water use conservation and management, alternative livelihood, and food security, which has greatly benefited the local communities across the region. This year, the event will once again provide a dynamic platform for knowledge sharing, collaborative action, partnership building, and a forum to advance commitment and cooperation in achieving the shared vision of sustainable development on clean water and sanitation, sustainable cities and communities, climate action, and life below water. We have accomplished many meaningful achievements over the year, but there is a lot more to do. Each of us can make a contribution towards having more sustainable oceans and coasts. Together, let us move as one with the Global Ocean Agenda. 
the East Asian Seas Congress 2018. 25 years of partnership in promoting healthy oceans, people, and economies. Moving as one with the Global Ocean Agenda. Delegates, participants, guests, welcome to Iloilo City, Philippines. The National Telecommunications Commission has denied the motions for reconsideration filed by Sear Telecom and PTNT on the disqualifications of their bids for the new telco player slot. The selection committee affirmed its decision to disqualify PTNT for failure to submit its certification of technical capability. It also dismissed the allegations of Sear Telecom that winning bidder Ms. Latell violated its exclusivity contract with Digifil Technologies in providing broadband and other ICT-related services. The committee said the agreement between Ms. Latell and Digifil does not constitute a fraudulent or obstructive practice. Meanwhile, Sear Telecom criticized the NTC committee's decision to junk their appeal. For its part, Sears claimed that Ms. Latell's agreement with Digifil is relevant in determining the former's legal capacity to enter into a consortium. Ms. Latell tied up with Udena, Chelsea Logistics, and China Telecom in a bidding to win the telco player slot. The DICT refutes allegations that it favored winning telco bidder Ms. Latell because of its connections. Here is our report from Miguel Hill. The Department of Information and Communications Technology says it did not give undue favor to Ms. Latell Consortium in its decision to provisionally award it the third telco slot. Ms. Latell won the bidding by default after Sear Telecom and PTNT were disqualified due to lack of required documents. The ICT Acting Secretary Eliseo Rio Jr. points out that Ms. Latell did not win because of Udena head Dennis Uy but because of its requirements. He reiterated that the new major telco player must have the financial and technical capability to compete with existing players PLDT and Globe Telecom. Mistletel has committed to provide internet speeds of 55 Mbps covering 84% of the population with capital expenditures or capex of around 250 billion pesos over a five-year period. The DICT hopes to confirm the new major player before the end of the year. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Miguel Hill. Smart Communications announced that it has activated its first cell sites with fifth-generation technology or 5G capability in Makati City and Clark Freeport Zone in Pampanga. PLDT and Smart Chairman and CEO Manny Pangilinan says the new cell sites puts the company alongside the first-tier operators in the world to have deployed live 5G base stations. PLDT says it is focused on delivering its 5G services in high-density areas for the benefit of enterprises. PLDT and Smart signed a Memorandum of Understanding last week with Clark Development Corporation to launch Clark Freeport Zone as its first smart 5G city in the country. Around 25 5G cell sites will be deployed in Clark within the next six months. PLDT meanwhile expects mobile phones with a 5G capability to be available in the country next year. The Balangiga Bells are sure to become a tourist attraction once it returns home to Eastern Samar. Local tourism officials say the region should prepare not just for the Bells' welcome ceremony, but for the influx of tourists who will visit them. Aside from showcasing the Bells, its return will also be a great opportunity to share the story of the Balangiga encounter and its lessons. The Balangiga Bells will begin their journey home following a ceremony at the F.E. Warren Air Force Base in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Two of the bells are displayed in the base while a third bell is in a U.S. Army Museum in South Korea. Lawmakers in General Santos City honor a Filipina who was saved from death row. And Ilocos Norte seeks to be called the Black Garlic Capital of the Philippines. More of these stories from the provinces from Maricor Zapata. 
In General Santos City, the City Council honored Tuesday an OFW was saved from death row in the United Arab Emirates. The council members hailed Jennifer Dalquez for her perseverance and sacrifices, especially during her nearly four-year ordeal inside the UAE prison. Dalquez now gets livelihood assistance and will undergo psychosocial debriefing and counseling sessions through the City Social Welfare and Development Office. Dalquez was sentenced to death in May 2015 for killing her employer in self-defense for an attempted rape. In Ilocos Norte, the province is now one step to becoming the black garlic capital of the country. The Mariano Marcos State University has passed the phase one of the project on improving the productivity of black garlic in Ilocos Norte. The project is funded by the Japan International Cooperation Agency. Black garlic is now locally produced in Ilocos Norte through MMSU and the provincial government of Ilocos Norte. In Pangasinan, the Sangguniang Panlalawigan has passed an ordinance declaring the Pangasinan Provincial Capital Building as a cultural heritage site. This is to commemorate the building's 100 years of historical and cultural milestone in December. The Provincial Council will endorse the proper declaration of the capital as a cultural heritage site to the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Maricor Zapata. Up next, the LTFRB is set to conduct a hearing on the petition for jeepney and bus fare rollbacks. Clashes at the Gaza Strip stop as Israel and Palestine agree to a ceasefire. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. My aspiration to become a broadcaster and a public servant was born here in Cagayan de Oro. President Rafi messaged me and uh, President Alan and told me that I was to become an honorary member of Cagayan de Oro Press Club. Mas, mas maging really emotional ako dito sa'yo. This is Secretary Martin Andanar and you're watching as long as you are truthful, you are accurate in your report, and you are objective in your report, you have nothing to fear. Sila ang dapat matakot sa inyong lahat. Uh, I am pretty certain that both of them are looking down, smiling, and saying thank you. Again, the Oro Blessed Club for recognizing the humble achievement of our grandson. Thank you. Mabuhay ng man. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board is set to conduct a hearing on the petition for rollback in jeepney and bus fares. The United Filipino Consumers and Commuters filed a petition seeking a rollback in jeepney fares from 10 pesos to 8 pesos. They also want a 1 peso rollback in air-conditioned and ordinary bus fares in Metro Manila. The UFCC said in its petition that fare rollbacks are necessary due to their decrease in fuel prices as well as the Pantawid Pasada program. The commuter group also cited the directive given by Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade for the LTFRB to review the fare hikes. In our foreign news, clashes at the Gaza Strip have stopped as Israel and Palestine agreed to a renewed ceasefire. The ceasefire was declared amid efforts by Egypt and the United Nations to stop hostilities in the Gaza border since Monday evening. Palestinian factions announced the ceasefire in a joint statement, adding that they will abide by it as long as Israel adheres to the truce. The ceasefire will end what is considered the most severe round of fighting between the two sides since 2014. Gaza militants fired some 400 rockets into Israel on Monday and Tuesday, while the Israeli military struck more than 100 targets inside the coastal enclave. Seven Palestinians were killed in the Israeli strikes, while one person was killed in Israel. 
Ten young talented footballers have fulfilled their dreams after attending the Milo FC Barcelona camp in Spain. The Filipinos, together with players from other countries, were immersed in a series of sessions with Football Club Barcelona Youth Academy's coaches. Their trainings were held on the pitch at Ciutat Esportivo Training Ground and in the classroom at Camp Nou in the stadium house of FC Barcelona. The Filipino booters, who got exclusive training with former Brazil and Barcelona player and legend Juliano Belletti, also had the opportunity to watch FC Barcelona play against Betis in the La Liga match. Milo Philippines consumer marketing manager Roby de Vera says they were delighted to fulfill the dreams of those players who have not only shown the right skills but also embody humility, effort, ambition, respect, and teamwork. True beauty goes beyond skin deep as proven in a recent pageant where the contestants defy society's traditional definition of beautiful. More on this from Marie Cora Zapata. Twelve differently abled girls have recently showcased their talents and brilliance in vying for the title of Miss Possibilities 2018. Miss Possibilities is Asia's first pageant for people with special needs. It is also an inclusive fashion show with Filipino celebrities. It aims to provide the girls an opportunity to showcase their unique character and charisma on stage. This year's winner is 19-year-old Samantha Pia Cabanera. Cabanera has Asperger's, a form of autism, since she was 18 months old. She is a senior high school student at St. Theresa's College and plans to take up creative writing. While she appears sociable and smart, Cabanera says she still has challenges in making eye contact, socialization, and mastering her emotions. Cabanera wants to advocate for people with autism and PWDs to remove the social stigma that comes with their condition. While she believes joining pageants can help kids like her build confidence, she says what is important is believing in themselves and what they can do. Susana Yuzon, founder and president of Miss Possibilities Foundation, started the pageant four and a half years ago. Yuzon's inspiration for establishing the foundation is her daughter, Joey, who was diagnosed with Down syndrome. The foundation now has 28 members who have children with other special needs, but some of their volunteers are single people who believe in the cause. She hopes to let children with special needs know that they have value to the society and with a little understanding and acceptance, they could be productive. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Maricor Zapata. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Let's take another look at today's top stories. A political analyst says more Filipinos are likely to support federalism soon. The U.S. announces the official return of the Balanghiga Bells to the Philippines. The National Telecommunications Commission junks the appeals of telco player aspirants Sierra Telecom and PT&T. And the LTFRB is set to conduct hearings on the petition for jeepney and bus fare rollbacks. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And it is now 39 days more to go before Christmas. 
And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Good day.